she's going to give a lecture, and after that, she's going to leave the room open to questions. So make sure that everything that you're curious or anything that, that she are here to do. And she'll say more about herself. So let's just welcome her. Good morning. Good morning. This is my podium. What do you think? You think it's okay? Uh, yeah. I think it's fabulous. Thank you very much. Um, I really, really wanted to come here. It took me a long time to get here. Probably took me longer than it took you to get here. I've been trying to get here for the last couple months to come in and talk to you and figure out how I could, how I could spend some time with you. So the last five years, uh, I've been on NBC. I've been on a program called Daytime. I don't know if any of you ever saw it. It's on Channel 8. Mm -hmm. And I do a weekly reality check. And what I do is I talk about all different subjects and then we open up the phone lines to viewers and viewers call in. So at the end of this, you know, if there's any questions that you have while I'm talking, just hold those questions and then at the end I'll be happy to answer any questions you have, okay? Um, every week I give a reality check on Channel 8, on NBC, and regardless of the problem that people call in, and they call in with, with every kind of problem imaginable, the dynamic or the reason why they call in is usually the same. Whether people are in an emotionally or physically abusive relationship, whether people have severe health issues, whether uh, they can't stand their job, whether they're in debt, the common denominator is that everyone who calls in feels stuck. And when you feel stuck, what happens is you end up feeling victimized. They all ask, why is this happening to me? They assume that something's happening to them that they have no control over. But what's really happening when you feel like you have no control is that you've literally given your power away. And that's what, when we end up feeling victimized, is when we give our power away. We tell ourselves things are just simply the way we are, and then what we do is we get on the phone and we call our friends and we call our family and we try to get them to agree with us that the way we see things are right. You understand? Is that what we all do? And everybody thinks they're doing us a favor by doing that. They're not doing you a favor. But if somebody doesn't agree with you, you end up not calling them anymore, is that right? I take them off my calling list. You end up calling somebody else who will agree with you. And the bottom line is that nothing changes. Things just keep going on the way they were. For the last 30 years, I've been talking to people. I see people from all different walks of life. And the reason that I really wanted to come here today is because I don't think there is any population anywhere that feels more victimized, that feels like they've given their power away than this population. Am I right? Yes. Okay, okay. So here's the deal, guys. Regardless of why you're in here, it, it, I, I don't care. You understand? I have no judgment whatsoever. It doesn't make any difference why you're here. The feeling that you have is one of powerlessness. And that's not good. You become a victim of the system, and more importantly, you become a victim of life. That victim mentality that we get into, and trust me, even though I'm not sitting there with you, I have also had that victim mentality. There's not one person among us who lives and breathes when they haven't been stuck in their life, when they haven't had that victim mentality. Is everybody with me here? Okay. So we're all in this together. You understand? Okay, so I want to tell you today that you have an opportunity to really change your life. It does not have to continue this way. If you change the way you think, if you change the way you feel, you're going to end up changing your life. I've been there. I understand what that's about. What I want to tell you is, even though you're here, even you, though your body may be imprisoned within these walls, you're eternally free. 
I want you to understand that. You really are. At every moment, you create your world by what you think and what you feel. Your thoughts create your feelings and your feelings send out a vibration that creates your life. Is everybody with me here? Am I making sense? Because yeah. if I'm not, you can stop me, okay? What I want you to understand is that the majority of the world is walking around outside of these walls. Majority of the world is walking around outside of these walls. These people are not really free either. They, they, they look free. What makes you free is this. You, you guys with me? What makes you free is this. They, people, I see people every day. I, I, I see people in all walks of life who are making millions of dollars. You understand and have all the stuff, the cars and the houses and the boats. They have the same problems, human problems. They're not free either. They feel victimized by life. Every day they come to me, they make constant excuses as to why their life is the way it is. And they believe that what they're experiencing right now is what they're always going to experience. And although they appear to be free, they've given away their power. And they have no idea that they also can change the course of their lives just like you can. I see these people every single day and they're no different than you even though they're not in here. You, you understand? Okay. They have negative thoughts. They're in debt. They have poor health. They have abusive relationships. What I want you to understand today is that the quality of your life is not based on where your body happens to be at the present moment. It's the state of your mind, the thoughts you have, and how you feel. Is this making sense to people? Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of a man named Viktor Frankl. He wrote a bestseller book that's in the New York Times bestseller list. He was probably one of the most well-known people who have ever been in the concentration camps. You all know what the concentration camps were? Yeah. You know that they happened in Germany. It's where they, they put the Jews behind bars. Terrible, terrible things happened to those people. And he was a psychiatrist, and when he went out, he, he wrote a book that was a bestseller. And you know what Viktor Frankl said? Viktor Frankl said, you can imprison my body, but you cannot tell me what to think. You cannot tell me how to feel. And what he would do at the very top of, the, uh, uh, of his prison cell, he would look out, there was a tiny, tiny little space. And he would look out and he would see a flower way in the distance. And when he thought about him, thought about that flower, it would give him peace inside. They killed his wife. They killed his mother. They killed his father. They killed his two children. They killed his aunts. They killed his uncles. They killed everyone. He used to sit in his cell and he used to remember the smell of his wife, what she smelled like. He used to remember her face. You understand? That's what gave him joy. That's what allowed him to go through that. Not only can you create peace and happiness here in jail, what I want to tell you is this time right now might be the perfect place for you to turn your life around. This place where you are right now might be just the time out you need to begin to reevaluate how you want to go in a new direction. I personally think this is a real opportunity for all of you that you can take this opportunity. Ain't nothing going on here. You, you understand? You don't have to be anywhere. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do anything. You can really, really take this time to focus on yourself and think about how you want to go in a new direction. The other day I turned on Oprah. There was a guy on it. I, I don't 
I, I tried to find out if you watch TV V here. I don't think you do a lot of the time. But anyway, let me, let me tell you what the show was. It was fabulous. It was um, an African-American guy who had been in jail for nine years. He is now the executive chef at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. You guys ever heard of the Bellagio? It's like the coolest, hippest place around. Very, very upscale. In order to be the executive chef in the Bellagio, you have to be very, very good. He was sentenced. He was from West Los Angeles. And he said at his height, because he came from the projects, so he really didn't have much. His, fa his, you know, I think his father left when he was born, and his mother had a couple jobs. And when he was doing the best that he could, he was making about thirty-five thousand dollars a week selling drugs. And he thought he was like all that, you know. And he got busted, and they sentenced him to nineteen years. He was on Oprah last week. He said that when he got in the jail. He didn't know what to do. They sent him to the library. He thought, I'm not a reader. I don't really like to do. And they said, you know what? He's a big guy. Let's send him into the kitchen. He can clean the pots. And so that's where he started. He started cleaning the pots. And then he went over and he started helping with the salads. Was the only prison where he, you know, for lunch, all the prisoners would have uh, uh, tomatoes in the shape of roses. You know, he was carving stuff. He was making gourmet meals for everybody. And when he got out, everybody wanted to help him. And he became the executive chef at the Bellagio Hotel. So instead of feeling demoralized, instead of feeling victimized here, I want you to begin to see this as the perfect opportunity to really begin to look at yourself and say, how can I do it a little bit different? There's only one way that I know, and I've been doing this for 30 years, there's only one way that I know to get out of that victim mentality. You have to take full responsibility for being here today. You understand? Now, what that means is there may have been other people involved, it may not have been a good day, it, it could be a variety of reasons. But you know how I feel responsibility? If it happened to you, it belongs to you. You're the one who's sitting here. You understand? Not somebody else. So unless you realize I'm the one who's sitting there, I'm the one, I can spend all day long blaming it on somebody else, but unless I'm willing to take responsibility for why my butt is sitting in this room, it's never going to work. Everybody with me? You okay with me? With what I'm talking about? Okay. Okay, good. My clients say to me all the time, why did this happen to me? And you know what I tell them? Because what happened to me didn't happen to you. You know what that means is? Different stuff happens to different people. Nobody's stuff is any better or worse than anybody else's. You understand? It's just your stuff. I have my stuff. My assistant, Alicia, has her stuff. I'm sure your therapist has her stuff. We all have stuff. You understand? It's not better or worse, it's just yours. And when it's yours, you have to take responsibility. That means you have to own it. You have to stop making excuses. You with me? Okay. We all know that when our life doesn't work, and we keep doing the same things that we've always done, we're going to keep getting the same results. Is that true? It's true. Okay, so you don't have to be like brilliant to figure... No, you, we, we don't have to have... Go to school or get a college degree or any of that to understand this, right? If your life doesn't work and you keep doing the same things that you've always done, you're going to get the same results, right? Okay. How many times have you heard people say, let some time pass, things will get better? <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> do, do we know that that's not true? Yeah. Time is not good or bad. It's totally neutral. It's just a backdrop with which we live our lives. You understand? Things that are good 
if you do nothing. Let's just say we do nothing, okay? So over time, if you do nothing, things that are good, they get better, right? Mm -hmm. Things that are bad, what happens? There, there you go. So if you do nothing, see something got you here that wasn't good, right? We all agree that. We all agree. Not whose fault or whatever. Something wasn't good that got you here. If you don't do something differently than what you've done before, you're coming back. You, you understand? It's not hard to figure out. So you have to do something differently than what you did to get you here. Okay? All right. What happens is that what got you here is like a big jet plane. You know what a big jet plane is? You've seen those planes that just go in one direction. They have a lot of steam and propulsion behind them, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a while ago, you had to do a bunch of stuff to get in trouble. Now you just have to do a kind of little thing and you end there. You see? Because you, you're like a big jet plane. You have all this stuff behind you that's pushing you in this direction. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, in order to change, that jet plane has to turn around. Jet plane doesn't turn around like this, does it? How does a jet plane turn around? It has to go like this, has to come all the way out, takes a little while. Because see, all the stuff that got you here is all the stuff you're hardwired in. It's like a house of cards. Now you just touch one thing and the whole thing goes. You see what I'm saying? So in order to turn that jet plane around, it takes a little while. But once that plane turns around, guess what, ladies? You're going in a new direction. And you have just as much energy going in that new direction as you had going in this direction. This is what I want you to do today. I want you to just sit back and relax and just hang with me a little bit. I really want you to be open to listening to what I have to say, all right? Because if you just leave here today with just one thing... <laughs> That'll be a really, really good thing for you. What I want to teach you today is how to create the life you want. You know, people talk about this all the time, but no one ever tells you how to do it. They say you're just supposed to be happy. What does that mean? You know, I mean, what does that really mean in real life? You understand? What I want to teach you today is that you can create the life you want by the thoughts that you think and the feelings that you have. Do you comb your hair in the morning? Everybody comb their hair in the morning or at least try to put themselves together. You look in the mirror? Okay, so if you comb your hair in the morning and you look in the mirror... And you comb in yours too? <laughs> yeah. So if you comb your hair in the morning and you're looking in the mirror and this is hanging down here and you want to move this over to here, you don't take the brush and start combing the mirror, do you? No. Why? What's the mirror? Life. There you go. Life. Your life is a reflection of what happens inside. You, you understand what I told you? What we think lots of times is that outside is what creates our life. That's not true. You create your life from the inside out. Does everybody understand that concept? Are you, are you with me? Yeah. Okay. I want to talk to you a minute about quantum physics. Don't get scared. It's really, really easy stuff. All this means is that the universe is governed by universal laws. And those laws work all the time. It's a paper clip. If I let go of this paper clip, is it going to fly up? No. Why not? Gravity. Right. Does gravity work most of the time? No. All the time. 
all the time, right? So if I drop this, where's it going? Down. Down. There you go. That's a universal law. Gravity is a universal law. You, you understand? It always works. The man who's the head of the space program, his name is Werner von Braun. And what he says is that the universal laws are so precise that we know the exact instant the shuttle is going to hit the earth. Not quarter of a second, not eighth of a second, but the exact instant. Because universal laws always work. <clears throat> Another universal law that always works, other than gravity, is called the law of attraction. Has anybody ever heard of that, the law of attraction? There you go. What the law of attraction means is that we attract to us a match for our vibration. Y you understand? It's in simple terms, <clears throat> what we think, what we think is what creates how we feel, and that feeling goes out into the universe, right? And we're going to attract a match for that. So if you're out and about and you're grocery shopping and you're in a good mood, what happens? People talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if you're nasty and ugly? You sort of repel people or you get in a fight in the parking lot. You understand? This is the kind of stuff that happens. So we're going to attract to us a match for our vibration. Your attraction meter is your feelings. That's your, you have a meter, and, and, and your feelings are what register that on that meter. And your inner voice, you know that voice that says to you, don't go there and you do it anyway? You, you know that voice that says, uh-oh, this is bad, and you say, what the hell, I'm just going to do it anyway? And you don't listen to it? <clears throat> that inner voice always has your best interest at heart. And when your feelings are aligned with what you want or what's good for you, that inner voice says, yes, go. And when it's not, that inner voice says, stop. You understand? The law of attraction. Like attracts like. Birds of a feather flock together. Whatever you want, wants you. <laughs> What you sow, you reap. What you put out, you get back. What goes around, comes around. Everybody clear? Yeah. Have all of you heard of Albert Einstein? Yeah. Albert Einstein, what did he say? E equals MC squared. You know what that basically means? Everything in the world is energy. Everything is energy. Look at my hand. You think my hand is solid? It's not solid. If you look at my hand under one of those high-powered microscopes, what you're going to see is a bunch of molecules moving very, very, very fast. But it looks solid, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This looks solid. This is really not solid. It appears solid, but it's not solid. It's moving all the time. Everything is energy. Everything in the entire world is energy and it's vibrating and it's moving all the time. You understand? Mm -hmm. Everything. The law of attraction says that you will attract to yourself a match for your energy. So if everything is moving all the time and everything is energy, we're, we're energy also, right? Mm -hmm. And we send out energy. And if the laws of the universe always work, and like attracts like, you're going to attract a match for your energy. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're thinking negative thoughts, you're going to feel something negative, and you're going to pull something negative into your life. Mm. The opposite is true. If you're thinking positive thoughts, if you're thinking loving thoughts, that feeling is going to be a loving feeling. That energy is going to be loving. 
and you're going to attract something loving to you. There's only one thing in the world that permeates everything, that permeates all energy. You know what that is? Thought. Have you ever thought about your girlfriend? She's probably thought about you. You've gone to call her. You pick up the phone. The phone doesn't even ring. She's on the other end without the phone ever ringing. Thought just permeates everything. Your feeling of wanting to talk to her has attracted her feeling of wanting to talk to you. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, what you think, create your feelings. And your feelings set up a vibration, an energy frequency that goes out into the universe and finds a match for that frequency. Isn't that how we all ended up here today? Come on. Be honest. Isn't that what happens? That's what happens to me when things happen in my life that don't work. That's also what happens to me when things happen in my life that do work, by the way. Jesus says in the Bible, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. You understand? Okay, I'm going to tell you how to do this. You ready? First step, you have to ask for what you want. If you don't ask for what you want, how can it be given to you? You, you understand? You have to ask. You can't just go out there, well, whatever comes to me, comes to me. You have to go deep inside. Use this opportunity. What kind of life do I want for myself? What do I want to create? Do I want a good relationship? Do I want good work? Do I want to be financially independent so I can support myself? Do I want to have my children with me? You understand? What is it that you want? When I was going through a difficult time several years ago, I had a conversation with my girlfriend. She said to me, you know, Chandra, you know how you get what you want? I said, you know, tell me. She says, you have to ask for it. I thought, that's a novel idea. I never thought about it. How great is that? You have to ask for it. I never thought of asking for it before. You understand? Do you remember when you were a little? The story of Aladdin coming out of the... The genie would, you know, pop out of the bottle. What would he say? Your wish is my command. Right? Yes. Your wish, ask and it should be given. Ask and it shall be given, it says in the Bible. To him who knocks, the door is open. There you go. To him who knocks, the door is open. Let me ask you a question. How many of you go into a restaurant, ask for what you want, place an order, I want my meat well done, uh, I want my meat medium rare, I want broccoli, I don't want pasta, I want a little of this. Do you expect when you go into a restaurant that you're going to get what you order? Yes. yes. And yet in life you don't. Y you understand? You expect. If you don't get what you order, you're like, hey man, take this back. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on, I, this, is what, this isn't what I ordered, I'm not taking this. <laughs> You understand? But in life, we're just kind of like, whatever. No, no, no. You get to order. You get to put in an order. You have to put in an order to the universe of what it is that you want. You have to ask yourself, what do I truly want? The universe is very literal. So what I want you to do is, I don't want you to focus on what you don't want. So if you're in debt and you're constantly saying, I want to be out of debt, I want to not owe people money, the universe here is debt, money, not good, and you're always focused on that. I want to be out of an abusive relationship, I want, no, 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 don't focus on that. Instead, what I want you to say is, I deserve to be in a healthy and loving relationship. I deserve to be loved unconditionally. 
I see myself being financially independent. I see myself doing the work that I love. Everybody with me? Not, I don't want to do this work anymore. I'm tired of being an abusive. Not that. I want you to phrase it in the present tense as though it was happening to you right now. What we have to do to create the life we want is we have to do the big as if. What's the big as if? The big as if is if you feel great about yourself right now, you see yourself in a great relationship, you see yourself doing work you love, you understand? You have to be able to be very, and this is a perfect place. Being in jail, this is perfect. This is the perfect time. People go, I spent 10 years studying and meditating in India. I lived in a monastery. I know what it's like to live in a jail. You understand? I, I didn't leave there for 10 years. I mean, I know if you look at me, you don't think that, but it's true. I really did. I lived there for 10 years. And that's a perfect place. This is a perfect place for you to be quiet, for you to figure out what you want, how you're going to do it differently when you leave here. Remember the Mira story I told you. You create the world from the inside out. That life out there can change in a moment if something inside of you changes. We think the physical world makes us feel the way we do, but that's not true. We create our world by what we think and what we feel. The life that you're living today, you need to look at that. You've created that. You understand? And the reason it's important to take responsibility for this today, what you've created, is because if you take full responsibility for what you've created today, at that moment you immediately take your power back and know that you can create something else. You understand? You can create anything you want. So the first thing we need to do is ask. I need you to put your order in for what you want. Okay. Now the universe answers. Don't be impatient. Ending up here didn't happen yesterday. It wasn't like you had a great life last week and all of a sudden this happened. This has been going on for a long time. Come on. Let's be honest. By the time this happens, you've been doing a lot of stuff that doesn't feel good for a long time. Is that true? There's no way. There's no way. Because I know when I had relationships that didn't work, it was years and years of doing the same stuff. Anytime a new guy would come around, he'd have a different name, but he'd be the same guy. You understand? It's the same guy. Every time. It's when you realize it's about you. Now you have to be willing to do something to make those changes. Here's the thing when you put in your order. Here's the thing that's really important, guys, when you put in your order to the universe, asking for what you want. Don't worry about the outcome. That's the most important thing. You okay? Everything? Don't, don't worry about the outcome. See, what happens is we want to manipulate the outcome. We, we tell the universe that we want something and we, we say we just want it exactly like that. So if a real opportunity comes over here and it's not exactly how you imagined it, that opportunity goes right by you, doesn't it? You totally miss that. You understand? You're responsible for putting in the right ingredients. That's what I want you to put in. Don't worry about how it all plays out. Does it really matter what Mr. Right looks like? As long as we're loved unconditionally? and we feel safe, and we can also share that love? Do we care if he's 5'10", or 5'4", or bald, or blonde, or dark hair, or blue? Who cares? You, you understand? We don't care. We, we, we set up all this stuff because we think that's what's going to make us happy. But that's not what makes us happy. What makes us feel good is that we're connected. 
So what you put out there is not, I wanted exactly this, this, and this. I want a great, I want a great home to live in. And you know what? I don't care where it is. I don't care what it looks like. I just want a place for me, for my kids, that's safe, where I can cook meals and have my friends over. And I see myself in that place, and you imagine yourself in that place, and you feel it. And you let the universe deliver. Does it matter whether it's in Brandon or Tampa or St. Pete? Who cares? I don't care. As long as I have that feeling. Are, are you guys with me? Okay. So the universe answers. Here's the thing. When you begin to start thinking differently and feeling differently, it takes a while for that jet plane to turn around. Don't be impatient. You understand? When you plant a seed, fruit falls from the tree. It always does. It's a universal law. There's no way it's not going to happen. I have clients come to me all the time and say, I wonder what my future is going to be. I start to laugh. Your future, if you do nothing different than what you've been doing, this is your future. You, you understand? Your future is your present projected forward. So, if you begin to do things differently than you've ever done them before, you're going to have a different future. There's no way that you can't have a different life. You don't need to see the whole picture in order to know that it's changing. If you want to go from Florida to California, it's 3,000 miles. People make it across country all the time driving, don't they? How far do the headlights show ahead? No more than 200 feet, right? We make it all the way across the country. How do we do that? You can only see 200 feet ahead of you. You understand? That's all you need to see. Do what you can with what you got. Little by little, every day. And before you know it, you're in California. After you ask... And the universe is in the process of answering. It's not going to work if you're not going to be able to receive. You have to be able to receive. If you don't think you deserve good things, I don't care what the universe gives you. You're going to sabotage it. You understand? There's probably been a lot of good things that have come your way. But if you don't think you deserve love, if you don't think you deserve financial freedom, if you don't think that you deserve to be around people who are loving and caring, if you don't think that you deserve that, anybody who comes near you, you're going to push them away. You're going to do something to sabotage the good stuff that's coming to you. Remember, the way you feel is everything. If you can't feel joy, how are you going to bring joy into your life? If you focus on hate, if you focus on anger, that's the stuff that you're going to be attracting into your life. One of the best ways I know to start to feel that you deserve it is gratitude. Do you have to go? Are we okay? It's gratitude. What I mean by gratitude is what I want everybody here to do just for two seconds, I want you to think about something that you're grateful for. Can everybody think of at least one thing? Can you? Can you tell me what those things are? Tell me what you're grateful for. Breathing. There you go. Hey, there you go. I ought to remember that. That's got to be the best. Breathing. Yes. I'm thankful for being able in uh, 2005 paying off my driver's license and being able to be a legal driver in the state of Florida if I had so many drugs. There you go. There you go. Whatever you feel grateful for. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what you feel grateful for. Close your eyes for a minute, whether that's a parent, a child, a job, driving, breathing. And if you close your eyes and you think about what you're grateful for, what happens? You have a feeling, don't you? The minute that you have a feeling, that feeling goes out into the universe. You, you understand? 
So when you start thinking about all the stuff you're angry about, when you start getting vindictive, when you start feeling hateful, when you start feeling all those negative feelings, if you think about what you're grateful for, that immediately changes your vibration and sets up another feeling for you. The most important thing that I can tell all of you, one of the things that you can put into practice right now, stop talking about your story. Whatever your story is, whatever got you here, it's one thing in therapy to work through issues. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the constant chatter of trying to get people to agree with you, to side with you, to tell you why you were right and somebody else was wrong. You, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. You need to zip it. Because what happens is that the more you talk about this stuff, the more hardwired it becomes inside of you. You really then believe that you are your story. And instead of having a real life, you just have drama all the time. Constant drama. And that's what got you here. The drama, your story is what produces drama. You understand? When my clients come to me, all they want to do is talk about their story. They say, Chandra, you're the only therapist we come to. We don't get to tell our story. You're the only one. I said, yeah, because, not because I don't care about you, but because after you tell me once, I'm not going to let you keep telling me the same things over and over and over again, because that's bad for you. You need to start talking about stuff that's going to put you in a new direction, not that's what's going to get you stuck in the past. The deal is you, not me, you have to get bored with your story. You have to hear yourself tell it again and you have to say, this is the most boring thing I have ever heard in my life. I cannot stand this story anymore. You understand? Yeah. You have to hear yourself talk and then you have to say, I I'm not going to say it anymore. <laughs> because until you're bored with your story, it's never going to change. You have to get really bored with it. Being real is the only way to have a real life. And the only way that you can be real and find out who you really are is by zipping it. Because you're not your story. Your story is just something that happened. It's not who you are. You understand? Yes. I don't care why you're here. I don't care what you did. It doesn't make any difference to me. I don't want to know. To me, you're not your story. You can be anything you want to be. When you let go of your story, you immediately end up in the present moment. What happens with your story is you're either in the past or you're in the future. But where does real joy come from? It only comes in the present moment. You only laugh in the present moment. You only love in the present moment. You understand? Yes. What happens is that when you stop telling your story, you stop complaining. You stop whining. When we tell our story, we think it's cool. But when somebody else is telling us their story, we know that's unattractive. Come on. And you're not doing your friends a favor by listening to their story. We think we're supposed to do that, but that's not what we're supposed to do. What you have to do is you have to say, Hey man, I really, really like you, and I'm there for you. But I'm not going to tell you my story anymore, and I'm not listening to yours. If you want to tell me something new... I'll listen to that. But if you want to complain and you want to whine and you want to make an excuse, I'm not listening to that. Okay, so here's the deal. You get to be victim for a day and then you have to decide because no matter what I say to you all, if you don't want to do it, I have clients say to me, how long is this going to take? I said it can take an instant or it can never happen. It's up to you. I already know it. And don't think that just because I didn't sit here that I also wasn't in that same victim mentality. We all are. Everybody, nobody gets it until they get it. You understand? It doesn't matter where you are. So to me, 
This is a re one, one of the reasons I wanted to come here, because I want to tell you, this is a real opportunity for you. You can turn this around. You understand? It can turn on a dime. If you're willing to let go, to stop making excuses, to really begin to figure out what you want and know that you can create anything you want. I want to just tell you, I'm going to end, and I'm going to open it to question, but I want to tell you a story. There were these two little dogs. And they heard that there was this great house of mirrors, this fabulous house up at the top of the mountain. And the dogs, there were two dogs, and the dog says, I have to go up there and see if this is the neighborhood that I want to live in because I've heard a lot of really good things about this. He says, but you know what? I'm, I feel like I, I hate my job and I want to get out of this relationship but I can't and I'm doing things I know I shouldn't be doing and I'm really angry at my mother and I'm angry at this and he goes all the way up to the top of the mountain and there's this big house of mirrors and he opens the door and he growls and a thousand dogs growl back at him. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh, I knew it, he said. This is a bad place. <laughs> then we have dog number two who says you know what it's a beautiful day out there I can create whatever I want I can do whatever I want the world is open to me I'm going to go see what that house is about and he goes all the way up to the top of the mountain and he opens the door and he smiles and a thousand dogs smile back at him and he says, isn't the world a wonderful place? You need to be one of those smiling dogs. You understand? It took me a long time to figure out that I was one of those smiling dogs. Every single one of us goes through the same stuff. This is a real opportunity for you. I really, really wanted to come here and talk to you, okay? Thank you. Very much. I appreciate it. What, what, I, what I'd like to do, is there anybody, any questions you have? I take questions all the time. So if, if you want to ask me anything, is there anybody that wants to ask anything? Everybody's fine? Yes. I have one little, one little small question. Have you ever been in homicide cases? I've worked with a lot of different people. The answer is yes, I have. To me, everybody is capable of being forgiven. You have to forgive yourself. That's what real loving is all about. Y you understand? We all make mistakes. Everybody is forgivable. But you, real loving is you have to forgive yourself. But not just by words. Y you have to truly be willing to, to, make, to make some changes. Anybody else have any questions? Yes. I have questions. I was going to tell you that's really nice. That's really good. You liked it? Yeah. Oh, good. Good, good, good. good. Thank you, ladies. Well, I wish you all the very, very best. What I did was, this is Alicia. She works with me. I brought uh, three books here. This is one of my books called um, Trationalizations, How to Stop Believing Your Own Excuses and Have a Real Relationship. And then I have another book called Reality Works. I also have CDs, but they told me I couldn't bring them here, so I brought books. So if any of you, if you want to pass these around to the girls and let them look at that. And thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. It's really been an honor to talk to you girls. I really liked it. And stay well and healthy, okay? You have other questions? Yes. Yes, you have a question? Or you want a book? Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. Yes. I just want to say thank you. You're a very good motivational speaker. I've heard a lot of motivational speakers, but you kind of hit home on more subjects. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Good. Good, good. Good. Well, I hope I can come back again. I'd like to do that. And hopefully I won't see any of you here. <laughs> huh? I hope not. Okay. Any other questions? Now's your chance. Now's your chance, ladies. I charge a lot of money, so come on. Yeah, go ahead.
Um, John, okay, hold on, guys, so I can hear. What, I sweetie? I wanted to ask you something. Um, so, um, you know, like, when I get out, so what you say? Oh, um. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. You, that's all right. Take your time. Go ahead. So what? You don't think, like, I mean, this whole thing is about moving forward, right? I would so, think so. Yeah. So you're saying, like, when we get out, we shouldn't go back to where we were and things like that, like, well, what we are clothes and No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you physically have to take care of yourself. What I'm telling you is, if what brought you here are relationships that are abusive, that don't make you feel good about yourself, that don't allow you to be the most that you can be, you need to think about maybe not having those same kind of relationships. You can't go back and do the same things that you did before. You, you understand you have to be willing to make some changes of what doesn't feel good for you. Yes. My mom used to always tell me, I'd be like, well, mom, maybe if I move, she's like, well, just cover When you're moving, you're bringing yourself. That's exactly right. So basically, is you have to look within yourself and start changing the way you think and the way you feel. You got exactly it. Exactly what you just said. You're, you got it. Now, here's the thing. If where you're living or who you're living with, you feel is not good for your self-esteem and your self-respect, that's a different story. But don't think just because you move from Tampa to Atlanta and do the same things that your life is going to change. It's not going to change. Yes. Oh, well, what, what happened to me, you know how you say whatever you put out, you get. So I put out love, I put out kindness, and I met this guy with the same love and the kind of, but my negative, I guess you could say negative, kicked back in and I brought him into my world, which that is what happened and follow him instead of him following me to keep me. Well, he, he, here's what happens. You have to be totally responsible. You know, uh, Alicia and I were driving over here this morning and, and I told her, I said, here's the deal. You can't care what anybody else does. You have to do what will make a good life for you. You, you understand? Yes. I'm sure a lot of you at times have not known how you're going to pay your rent, how you're going to eat, how you're going to do what. It's not the end of the world. What's the end of the world is if you really get hurt or you end up hurting somebody. You, you understand? Yeah. You have to figure out what works for you. If you have relationships, and those relationships are abusive, even though you have a place to live, and what, what good is it going to do? You're living here now. True. Anybody else? Yes. You made another comment about turn, uh, turning the jet around. It's like when people have records or be felonies or whatever, you know, that's just part of their lives. And so I guess doing the right next thing, when you do turn the plane around, you have to live it down too. So I guess that's what you mean by it. It takes time because you have felony points or you got a bad name, this is all you do. The minute you do that, like you said, it takes that little turn, then they want to send you make a, a convicted felon again. But, but here's the thing. You're, you're exactly right. You know, when, when, you, when you are a convicted felon, because I've, I've worked with a lot of convicted felons, I work with a lot of people in the criminal system, you have to be so aware all the time that you're creating your life, the decisions that you make. You can't go to sleep. You understand? You can't go to sleep. You can't go off into that, that, oh, that other layer. What, what addictions are about, it's about anesthetizing yourself that you don't want to feel. You understand? And it may, it, it may keep you from feeling for a minute, but it also makes you dumb. You, you, you understand? It makes you dumb. Yes? I just want to understand because when they leave here and you want to get good jobs. Yes. You do the background check. Yes. And we don't have a chance. Well, here's the thing. Uh, you, you, you want to know something? I, th that's why I wanted to come here today. Because I understand that once you've been in jail. You're like disenfranchised. You're a victim of the system. B by the way, and I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but I really don't care. I, I think it's terrible. 
I, I think that once you pay your debt, once you do what you have to do, to not be able to go back in society and, and not be able to vote and be a full-fledged citizen, I think it's horrible. And I think... I'm trying to do something about that right now. Uh, good. Because I think, it's, I think it's disgusting. I think that the only way... I mean, what... <laughs> What better thing than to have all of you be part of society again and, and, and to, to, to keep you on, it's ridiculous. So here's the thing. You know that when you go out there, the deck is stacked against you in a lot of ways. But you have to decide, am I just going to lie down and, and, and let the world roll over me or am I going to do what I can with what I got? You understand? Somewhere, someplace. If I had a business, I wouldn't have a problem hiring you. You understand? And there's a lot of people out there who feel the same way. Because to me, I would much rather work with someone that I feel is trying to rehabilitate themselves and turn stuff around than a lot of people that come in off the streets. This is just me, though. Yeah. There are a lot of people. Is there, is, I would assume, yeah. Is there a place that we can call or be in touch with where they do hire felons? Well, here's the thing. I actually do not have a list of that, but I'm sure that people here will. I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sure there are people here that can help you with that, but I don't have a list. Yes. Sweetie. Oh. Did you want to ask? Did anybody else want it? Yes. How could we end up with one of those that separated? Yeah. Um. You, you, Anybody who took a book, I, I, the book is only about 65 or 70 pages. It's a quick read. Would you please share it with everybody else here? Please. We have to put this through the library. We can't let you guys just take them, right? We'll take them back and we'll get them put in the pot. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. That'd be great. Great. Nice. great. I was just going to say you're right. You know, because one day I'm going to own a business, you know. Good. I would hire someone. Sure. As a matter of fact, I'd make a point for a lot of reasons. One reason you get you can get away from the truck. That's one reason. <laughs> I mean, I, would, I really would. So that's why I don't give up hope. No. Because it's like I know that everyone is an individual, and everyone can judge you individually as they choose. And if they choose not to hire you, well, good. Right. They're lost. And you go on to the next. Every, out of every ten, there's at least one yes. Good. I agree. Anybody else? Yes. Um, Shonda, when you were mentioning about relationship, and you hold on, guys. That, um, you just you, you can't get stuck on um, how, what somebody else is feeling. You got to go by how you know about um, how you want to do things, how right. you wanna live your life. Okay. Does that include like? I mean, I have my family is very small. I only have one sister and one brother, and then my mom and dad. So I mean. The relationship thing, like you want to be loved by your family, and you want them to, you know, you know, tell you where you're doing good or whatever. But if you don't think that you're getting that from anybody, I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. Sometimes you just have to just go move on and just. Here's the thing. You can't. You. Here's the thing, guys. I don't, I'm not making a comment about anybody's family or who anybody's with or not because I don't know any of this. You're never going to feel love unless you become love. You understand that? Until you get to a place where that joy can come out of you, you're not going to be able to feel it from anybody else. So before you decide you're not going to be with this one, you're not going to be with that one, my suggestion is to work on yourself. You know, I get a lot of couples that come to me he doesn't like her and she doesn't like him and they want to break up. You know what I tell? I'm the only therapist that tells my clients this. I don't want anybody leaving the relationship until both people feel good. Now, if it's a physically abusive relationship, I immediately set people apart. But you see, if, P if she thinks it's his fault and he thinks it's her fault and they break up, they just go out and find somebody else that has a different name and it's the same person. You, you understand? I don't want people to do that. I want people, if you don't want to be together, that's okay. But you need to separate with dignity and self-respect. And not blame the other person because you're behaving in a bad way. If you're doing things that you don't like, it's not because he's making you do it. It's because you've decided you want to do it. If you think that that's how you're going to get love, 
That's not what's going to happen because look, here we are. You, you understand? Yes. Michael Jackson's song says, start with the man in the mirror. Basically, you got to <laughs> The man in the mirror, you got it. Yes. You want to, did you want to say something? Yeah, I have, a uh, good thing I've had two good old friends here that I've known for a while, but I have a thing with uh, control issue. I'm still, it's hard for me to focus <laughs> on what I'm doing here because I'm still trying to control what's going on at home. Well, you can't do that. You're here. I know. You can't do Jack. And I, you know I, what over I'm, there. I, I'm working on it, but it's like, it's hard. Yeah. So you have to tell yourself, take a deep breath. You're here. What makes us unhappy is that we always want to be someplace that we're not. You understand? Even when you were out of here, you always wanted to be someplace that you weren't. You, you, you understand? So you might as well be here. This is where you are. You can want to be a million different places, but this is where you are. So why not be here and use this time? You couldn't control it when you were out. You sure as hell can't control it while you're here. And actually, we can't control anything anyway. You know what I tell my clients? Cut them free. Let them do whatever they want to do, because everybody's going to do whatever they want to do anyway. The quicker you cut somebody free, the quicker you're able to really take responsibility for your own stuff and then see who somebody is. You, you, are you with me? Yeah. Oh yeah. Just cut them free. Let, let people just do what they want. And then you look at them and you think, do I want to? I have w w women who come to me. He tells me, I like who I am and I'm not going to change. You know what I tell her? then you get, to be, you get to decide whether you want to be around who he likes who he is. <laughs> you, you understand? You get a choice. Do you want to be around who he likes who he is? Do you understand? Yeah. You're not going to change him. You're not going to change him. There's not a chance. People change because they want to change. You understand? You can't control anything. The only thing that you have control over is yourself. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, ladies, time for lunch. Thank you for coming. You're welcome, sweet. Give me a hug. Oh, thank you for coming. You're welcome, honey. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. There you go. There you go. Just stand up and write back. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Do you study religious science? Huh? Do you study religious science? Um, Same principles. I, um, uh, I've been doing this stuff for like 35 yeah. years. <laughs> I, I lived in India for 10 years. I studied with a teacher. I've been, you know, meditating since I've been, you know, like 16. Yeah. You know, really for a long good. time. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'd like is, um, you know, if you think that this was, I, I mean, I think it went well. You know, I, you know I'd love to come back and um, work with the, with, the, with the man as well. Okay, you need to talk with Joel. Uh, who do I talk to? Joel. Oh, I'll talk to Joel, that's fine. Everything okay? Yeah, okay, let me go grab my... Really yeah. Sorry about that. I just needed to send somebody back who had a lawyer in there. Not a problem.